Good evening and welcome to the Channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Rescuers say many of those killed and injured in a major earthquake on the Indonesian island of Java were children. <laughs> Officials say the death toll on the island is now at least 268, with more than 1,000 people wounded. Around 151 people are still thought to be missing, while 22,000 houses had been damaged and more than 58,000 people taken into shelter. President Joko Widodo travelled to Sianja on Tuesday and said the government would hand out compensation to the victims and their families. The 5.6 magnitude quake struck a mountainous region on Monday, causing landslides that buried entire villages near the West Java town of Sianja. A father and a drag performer managed to subdue a gunman who opened fire at an LGBT nightclub in the U.S. state of Colorado. The attacker killed five people and left 17 others with injuries at the club queue in Colorado Springs on Saturday night. Officials named the heroes who halted the attack as Richard Fierro and Thomas James without detailing their actions. I just know I got into mode and I needed to save my family. Mr. Fierro provided his account of events, saying he tackled the suspect, took the weapon, and hit him with it. I grabbed him by the back of his little cheap-ass armor thing, and I pulled him down. The young man that was that was late, he was hiding there, had jumped up with me. I don't know if he helped pull me, pull him down or not. I have no idea. Okay, that guy did the same act. I amazing. Pull the dude down, pin him against the side, and just. Started, oh, I think he went for his pistol. I don't know. Either way, I grabbed the pistol from him. And then I told the guy, move the AR, the kid in front of me. He was at his head. I said, move the AR, get the AR away from him. And the kid did it. And then I started wailing on this dude. And I'm on top of him. I'm a big dude, man. And this guy was bigger. Malaysia's opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim and the former premier Muhyiddin Yassin have arrived at the royal palace for an audience with the king, who said he will pick the next prime minister. King al Sutan Abdullah made the announcement on Tuesday but did not specify timing for his decision as the political crisis from an inconclusive election dragged on for a third day. Saturday's election resulted in an unprecedented hung parliament with neither Anwar nor Muhyiddin winning the simple majority needed to form a government. South African civil servants have marched to the country's national treasury in Pretoria to pressure the government over a wage dispute. Wage negotiations between unions and the government collapsed in early October, with the government subsequently saying it would unilaterally implement the 3% increase outlined in October's midterm budget. The Treasury has been trying to rein in spending on civil servants' compensation, which makes up around a third of consolidated spending. Scientists say the Shivaluk volcano in Russia's far east Kamchatka Peninsula may be gearing up for its first powerful eruption in 15 years. Kamchatka is home to 29 active volcanoes, part of a vast belt of earth known as the Ring of Fire, which circles the Pacific Ocean and is prone to eruptions and frequent earthquakes. Shivaluk is one of the largest and most active volcanoes in Kamchatka having erupted at least 60 times in the past 10,000 years. And King Charles has welcomed a foreign leader for an official state visit for the very first time. The Prince and Princess of Wales met the South African president at his London hotel on Tuesday morning before escorting him to Horse Guards Parade for the ceremony of welcome with the King. Cyril Ramaphosa was then greeted by the monarch and the Queen Consort at Horse Guards Parade as he began a two-day state visit to the UK. More than 1,000 soldiers and over 230 horses took part in the ceremonial event. The President then visited Westminster Abbey before attending a banquet hosted by the King at Buckingham Palace. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, along with the Home Secretary and Foreign Secretary, were also at Horse Guards Parade, where the President and King inspected soldiers from the Coldstream Guards. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos. <laughs>